talk about, what I have come to delight you, I hope delight you with, is the rich abundance of architecture that has been created for animals throughout the United Kingdom. We are going to relish the results of two of Britain's greatest passions, the love of animals and the architecture that was built to honour them. It was John Bunyan who said that an Englishman would rather walk with a dog than with a fellow Christian. And indeed, say I, so cheer I. But why? Why is it we are so touched by, say, tales of a chicken's friendship with a pony? Particularly for guiding the story I came upon, where the chicken would roost on the pony's back day in and day out. Oh, did you see that story not long ago about a donkey that saved his pal, the sheep, from an attack by a bull terrier? He heard that marvelous noise the donkeys made. He thundered down the field and got the bull terrier with its little sharp little hooves and got the bull terrier off the donkey. And then there were pictures of the two together. So why does that touch? Why is it that even the most stoically, unemotional, find that they possess an emotional streak and abandon what is little is left of the British reserve when faced with either a horse, a dog, or a bike car. In spite of accusations of disproportionate sentimentality, our hearts pound on, say, by Mary, Queen of Scots's dog, the little terrier who defiantly stayed between the severed head and the neck long after his mistress had been beheaded and would not leave her side, were quite as much stirred by that as we are by the fate of the poor queen herself, or at least I certainly am. The tears well up, the heart is pierced, and the soul is soothed, but what is it in particular? I believe it's the artlessness of animals. With no ulterior emotive, and with an innocence that is unsullied by other cynicism, skepticism, or guile, they are the source of constant and consoling comfort in our often contorted lives. We may have fallen from grace with animals, but not and in our ever-changing culture, animals have remained constant while soothing as well as invigorating our lives. They've given us cheerful support throughout the ages, and so it is that they have been honoured with architectural splendours and with monuments, great and small, from earliest time right up until the present day. From the mid-17th century until the well into the 18th century, it was, after all, the age of improvement, when both technology and taste were driving the agriculturists and the East Sea to ever greater heights with creatures supplying the greatest possibly good excuse for architectural experiment. What, pray, may I ask, could be more pleasing than an 18th century combined cattle house and dovecot, such as was built in Exton in Rutland to catch the eye in a parkland view? Or otherwise, look here at the hound kennels at Milton near Peterborough, designed as a mock medieval gatehouse attributed to the great architect William Chambers. The animals provided an excellent excuse for ever more building indulgence and fueled by fashion, <coughs> eccentricity, entertainment, and of course extravagance. They were lavishly housed in taste of the exotic and the picturesque, the neoclassical, the gothic, and the vernacular, all could flower and to a useful purpose, with the wildest flights of architectural fancy being employed. Because the poor old occupants could never complain how heavy and syncretic they're dwelling. And on such a small scale, the whim of the builder could flourish unbridled, often with scant observance to any architectural convention. To please the pigs is incised over the door of this stone pyramid at Tom in Shropshire, and a misleading inscription, if ever there was one, at any rate for the poor scrunched up occupants, with barely room enough inside for them to accommodate their snouts. <laughs> and it was built by an astonishing figure called George Durant II, who having had 40 children, I fear, by his wives and maids, was roundly condemned for making a brothel out of his house. But as well as this porcelain pyramid, he also decreed that he had a castle for cows, which you see to the right. He lived in an exotic Moorish castle himself, Tom Castle, complete with domes, that was built by his father in 1765. And he was determined that his animals should also live in equal architectural panache. And he built another pyramid for his poultry, 
with, which still stands to this day, and carved with such beguiling inscriptions as scratch before you peck, <laughs> and teach your granny, and then as a cockerel, and the words Egyptian Avery.